Schmidt for his last-minute political party switch. You may remember Schmidt switched from being a Democrat to a Republican before the filing deadline back in May. We now know Schmidt intended to pay his son to find a candidate to run against him on the Democratic side to assure Schmidt would hold on to his seat. But there were questions about the fake candidate's residency, so the Democrat, Matt Mojak, later withdrew his pressure, under pressure rather. News Channel 3's political reporter David Bailey's took a look at the prosecutor's report today and joins us now to tell us why it doesn't paint a pretty picture for Republicans. David. Good afternoon, Kate. Even though Representative Roy Schmidt and Speaker of the House Jace Bolger won't face criminal charges with this one, they're certainly not in the clear after you read this prosecutor's report. In fact, we talked with several longtime Republicans uh, today who say they are just flat out embarrassed at some of the facts uh, coming to light here this afternoon. Let's break it down for you. Today's report indicates uh, Representative Schmidt offered to pay $450 to the fake candidate just to put his name on the ballot on the Democratic side. It's clear Schmidt hatched this plan with Speaker Bolger to switch parties and to put a fake candidate in. Text messages published, published in this report show that coordination between the Speaker and the Representative to get this done, the Speaker asked asking if Schmidt had any luck in getting a candidate, quote, that's the last piece we need. Schmidt replied, I believe we do. The speaker's involvement didn't end there. Further text messages show he helped arrange to file Schmidt's candidacy with one of his staffers. In fact, that staffer uh, actually filed both Schmidt's and the fake candidate's papers at the exact same time. Now, Kent County Prosecutor Bill Forsyth uh, says this wasn't a crime, though, because the law doesn't address it. Quote, although this scheme by Representative Schmidt and Speaker Bolger was clearly designed to undermine the election and to perpetuate fraud on the electorate, it was nonetheless legal. Prosecutor Forsyth continues, as a Republican elected official, I am embarrassed and offended by what transpired. At a minimum, the legislature should put a time limit on when a candidate may switch parties prior to the filing deadline, allowing a candidate to recruit a so-called opponent and to allow the last-minute shenanigans that occurred in this case is a travesty and should not be permitted. Now, while everybody is in the clear when it comes to criminal charges, Prosecutor Forsyth indicated he forwarded this report on to the Secretary of State for what he called potential violations of the Michigan Campaign Finance Act. This entire prosecutor's report is a very interesting read. We have it posted on our website, WWMT.com, if you want to take a look at it. More